worshiping with us online we value and are delighted that you join us in worship Good evening, everyone. And oh, that, uh, that didn't sound so, so bright. Did you have a good day today? All right, so I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Good evening, Hillran. If you're happy and you know it, let me hear you say amen. That's wonderful. And if you're happy and you know it, let me hear you say, thank you, Jesus. And if you're really, 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 really happy, let me hear you say, praise the Lord. And what about if we give God the highest praise? Shout hallelujah, someone. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so happy that we're out here in the open here right here in hill run we have been here from sabbath and this is the third night well this is the third meeting in the series and let me just take the opportunity to say welcome to everyone who is here at this holy spot do you think that this spot is holy yes we have claimed it so and we know that god has been doing marvelous things right here in Hill Run. Let me say welcome and, 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 and good night, good morning, wherever you are in the wide world. Yes, we are worldwide. So let me just welcome all of you who are on our YouTube channel. And let me hope that you have had a good day and that you are ready to worship. Are you ready to worship, he'll run. Let me hear someone say worship. Yes, we're going to have a wonderful time out here in this community. I want you to stand and we're going to ask God's presence with us out in this place. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to you. You have been a wonderful God to us. We have deemed it a wonderful privilege to be out in this community out here in the open air in god's nature we are enjoying a cool breeze now lord and we say thank you thank you so much for the blessings that you have given to us today as we come to worship you i'm going to ask you lord please to accept our feeble efforts of giving you thanks and praise and adoration because you truly deserve every ounce of our praise. I ask that you will be with the program tonight. May everything that is said and done be or in our virtual space. Lord, I ask that you will be with the evangelist. Help, that, help him that he will get a glimpse of you again. And as he proclaim your word, souls will be blessed. I ask, Lord, that you will help someone to make a decision for you tonight, tonight, tonight. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Send your angels to sing along with us now as we lift up praise and adoration and thanksgiving to you. We say thanks in Jesus' name. Let everybody say, are you ready to sing? Have a seat. Are you ready to sing? All right. All right. Come on. Come on, elder. We're going to sing to the praise and honor of God. All right. Our first song tonight. We are on the battlefield for the Lord. Am I right? So we are going to sing, Sound the battle cry. See the foe is nigh. Raise the standard eye for the Lord.
Sound the bat to cry, see the foe is thy restless standard up for the Lord. Guard your armor up, stand firm, everyone. Press your cause upon his holy word. Foes and soldiers rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout the Lord of Sana, Christ is captain of the mighty throne. Strong to me, the four marching as we go, while our cause we know must prevail as the shields and banner bright gleaming in the light. But it for the right we never stand with us, the rose and soldiers rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along, onward, forward, shout the Lord of Santa, Christ is captain of the mighty John. Oh, the God of all, hear us when we call, help us one and all, by thy grace I say, when the battle's on, and the victory's won, we will not come before. Steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout the Lord of Sana. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, as soldiers, we understand that the time that we're living in is a serious time. Am I right? And we are going to turn to 617. 617. We are living, we are dwelling in a grand and also in an awful time. Dwelling in a grand and awful time In an age of ages telling To believe in his sublime Are the waking up of vision Dog and make up to the friend Mark was done in this creation Stand up for Jesus. 
imagine when we get over yonder and we blend our voices we blend those strong baritone voice and those alto voices and those strong um, soprano voices when we will make the course of heaven ring what a day that will be i know i want to be there and i know all of us tonight in the hearing of my voice and those who are gathered there and also those who are online we are making up our minds and we have already made up our minds that what i am going to make it comes what may for i shall be among the number that will sing on the sea of glass tonight is our wednesday night per meeting and uh, we are going to spend some time interceding to the Lord for each other. Tonight, we are going to invite all those in the hearing of my voice. And you need special prayer to come right here, wherever you are gathered. And you need special prayer. We are going to invite you to come. Right here is where the altar is. And wherever we create the altar, God is there to take the sacrifice. Am I right? Yes. So tonight we are going to create the altar right here. And for those of us who have our burdens, for those of us who have our challenges, for those of us who have our cares, for those of us who have our, our hopes and our aspiration, all of us can put it at the feet of Jesus. And tonight, we are going to lay them at the feet of Jesus. So I'm going to invite you, for those who are sitting to stand, and for those who are not so close, I'm going to invite you to come a little closer as we are going to intercede tonight. If you have your children, your, your concern about your children, your concern about your family members. Your concern about some co-worker. The burden is on your heart. For what? Some souls that are out there in sin. The burden is on your heart. For someone to be saved in the kingdom of God. Tonight, we are going to lay them at the altar. We are going to put them at the feet of Jesus. We are going to put them in the hands of Jesus for we know that what he is able not only that he is able but what he is also capable and even those online can participate in this prayer so we are going to ask you to come as we sing search me O God and know my heart today try me and know my thoughts. See, Lord, if there's what? 
any wicked ways in me. And tonight we're asking God to cleanse us. Tonight, two of our prayer warriors will be praying. We are going to ask Elder Williams to pray in a very special way for the request that would have been in our hearts. And we are going to ask Sister Dwyer to pray for children and the young people of this community and of Jamaica land we love. Search me, O Lord. If you're standing or sitting I know over the shop or you're somewhere else, we're going to ask you to join us for this prayer. Join us for this prayer. No, my Lord, I pray. You're going to see if there be some wicked ways in me. Cleanse me from every sin, Lord, and set me. tonight that God hear and answer prayer. What do you say? And so as we petition the throne of grace, those of you who are in your homes, I want you to reach out in faith and claim the blessings of God. Those of you who are online, I pray that you reach out in faith and touch the elm of his garment. Let us pray. Almighty God and our Father, indeed we give you thanks tonight for the preaching of the gospel. We thank you, God, that we could come to this spot of ground where we lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you tonight, Lord, that sinners can run to Jesus and find refuge in him. We pray even now, Lord, that as we petition heaven, that uh, something may be done in the lives of those who are listening. I pray, O oh God, uh, that you reach out and touch somebody tonight. We know, O oh God, that you are the balm in Gilead. Yes, Lord. You are the sympathizing Jesus. And so we lift up those who are sick in your presence right now. We pray, God, that you reach out and touch them. We pray that you bring about healing and deliverance in their lives. As they reach out in faith to touch the hem of your garment, Lord, we ask that the power of the Holy Ghost may rest upon them in a mighty way. I ask, O oh God, that you break the bonds of wickedness that is upon someone right now. We pray, God, that you release someone that is bound down with sin and shame. I pray, God, that you lift up someone out of the valley of sin and place them on the rock Christ Jesus. I pray Lord for those who are struggling. That you provide for them. I ask O oh God through the power of your Holy Ghost. That you deliver someone tonight. We know God that you are able. And you are capable. And you want us to reach out to you. And so tonight I pray for those who are in need. Whatever it is, I present them before your throne. I pray, O oh God, for those who are bound down in
we record. Ask, Lord, that you will send special help, extra help to protect them on their way to school, on the road, and even in their homes. We ask that you set a special covering over them. Father God, you said, lest we become, except we become as little children, we shall not enter. So we pray tonight that your Holy Spirit will teach and direct them. Help the parents to be living examples to them. Because we'll all have to give an account for our children. We pray that you'll give the parents the strength to work, to take care of them, to educate them and lead them in the right direction. Father God, when you come again, children are going to be saved and children are going to be lost. So we ask tonight in the name of Jesus that you'll help them to study your words, to choose right over wrong, and to remember their creator in the days of their youth. Thank you for being so good. Continue to provide for them. Continue to help them to be educated, to learn their lessons well. Again, Lord, we ask your covering over them and over their household. And we thank you for being such a God, for keeping them from seeing them from their mother's womb. Continue to cover them, O oh Lord, and send your angels to protect them day in, day out. Because we are living in a terrible time. Terrible times are ahead. So we pray that you will keep your children, O oh God, and lead them in the right direction. Remember our children of the household of faith. Guide and direct them as well and help them to stick to that which is true, that which is right, that which is perfect in your sight, so that when you shall come, we'll all be able to be saved in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You would agree with me that we are having a wonderful time down here in Ilran. I heard someone say it's cool down here. You would have to move, come down here. Because <laughs> it's hot in Spanish town. We are still in Spanish town, yes. But it's at up our side. But although it is cool in Ilran, the gospel is hot in Ilran. And I can say that the preaching of the gospel is present in Ilran. But the word of God says what? The preaching of the gospel will what? Soon be over. And uh, I, uh, it's regrettable to announce tonight that tonight is our last night tonight is our last night down here in Ilran but for now for no, praise the Lord praise the Lord right at this spot and uh, I want to thank you for joining us for the tonight the third night of our meetings we have to speak with us tonight again God's man servant and we you would agree with me and those online who have joined us for the other two evenings will agree with me that god has been using his man servant in a mighty way in a simple and mighty way for all of us can understand the message each night each presentation that has been done and we want to thank the lord for using his man servant tonight is no exception here we are going to ask the lord again pray a special prayer in your heart that the lord will use evangelist mcpherson mcfarlane sorry evangelist mcfarlane as he come to present the word of god again tonight before he comes we will have the song of meditation being done by these four gentlemen. One day I come to him. I was so thirsty. 
I asked for water. My throat was so dry. He gave me water that I have never drink of. And for this water, my Lord, he said I thirst. Yet he made the river. He said I thirst. Yet he made the sea. I thirst. Said the king of Yet he made the river. Thank you, gentlemen, for that beautiful song, powerfully done. And I just want to thank God for the ministry of his word, or the ministering of his word through music. And so, good night, everyone. Are you happy to be here tonight? Yes, man. And so I want to say to those of you in your homes, good night. Wherever you are out there, whatever you are doing, good night. My friends who are playing the domino, good night. Those by the bar, the shop, wherever you are out there, good night. 
We are inviting you all, however, to come on down. If you are up the road, we are inviting you all to come on down. If you are down the road, we are inviting you all to come on up. If you are around the corner, we are inviting you to come around. It is now time for the word of God. It is time for the word of God. And so we are inviting you all to come on down as we study the word of God one more time tonight. I also want to say good night to our online viewers. As usual, I have been telling you how grateful we are. I know that at this time there are a lot of programs going on. And for you to have chosen the Sydenham platform, we are truly, truly grateful. We are asking, however, that you will share the link. It is a good time now to, to just forward the link to someone so that they too can taste and see that the Lord is indeed a good God. Now, can you imagine that we are already at the end of the series? But that's how it goes when you are having fun. Time goes by in a jiffy. But I'm sure that we will do it again, Hilron. And uh, I am proposing for a longer period of time. All right. So I want to get into the word of God tonight. Whatever the Lord placed on my heart. And so I struggled with what I should call tonight's presentation. And so I want to call it. I'm just making up this right now. I want to call tonight's presentation for sure the best question in 2024. Right. So that is what I will be talking about for sure. The best question in 2024. And this is a question that every jackman in Hill Run and every Jill woman should ask this question, the best question in 2024. And so I invite you to bow your heads. Let us pray as we get into the study of God's words. Father God, we want to thank you sincerely for the day that has passed and gone. We thank you, God, for the night that is here with us. We thank you, God, for this spot of ground. We thank you, Lord, for those tonight who will be giving a listening ear we are thanking you in advance for those who will respond to the appeal at the end of this presentation may tonight God be the night when every person in Hill Run will ask himself or herself this very 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 important question be with me as I preach the word, this is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen. So for sure, the best question in 2024. So tonight I want to take you to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 16, to be exact. And there in Acts chapter 16, you will find the narrative about Paul and Silas. And the verses that I will be covering in this first section are verses 16 through to 24. So write down 
the chapter Acts 16 verses 16 through to 24. So right there you will find the narrative about Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were in prison but they would not allow the circumstances of their lives to get them down. And so the Bible tells us that these men were held for a just cause. Simply because they stand up for the rights and they stood against the wrongs. These men were held simply because they preached Jesus. And as a result, they were hated by the state. So much so that in Acts chapter 23, write this one down. Acts chapter 23, verses 12 through to 14. You will find there over 40 men who bounded themselves under a curse that they would not eat nor drink until they kill Paul. In fact, these men went to the chief high priest and they made it known that they would not eat nor drink until they kill Paul. And so, one day, as Paul and Silas went on their missionary exploits, they were lay waited. They were pounced upon. They were held. They were dragged into the marketplace. They were bound with chains. They were brought before the magistrate. She instructed the soldiers to rip their clothing off. Just like what they did to Jesus. I shared with you on Sunday night that Jesus was stripped naked. Similarly, Paul and Silas were stripped. Not only were they stripped, but the magistrate gave instructions for them to be beaten with rods. And Paul and Silas, they were beaten mercilessly. In fact, in Acts chapter 16 and verse 23, you will find there the Bible says, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, so, so, so these men, like Jesus, they were beaten until their backs were lacerated. They were beaten until their backs looked like raw meat. The Bible says, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, so not only were they beaten after the murderation, special instructions was given to the Philippians jailer to keep them safely. Who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison or into a dark, dark dungeon. So Paul and Silas were not just placed behind one bar. But they were placed behind two bars. They were um, um, thrust into the inner prison. Or into a dark, dark dungeon. A modern name for where Paul and Silas were placed is solitary confinement. And if that was not safe enough, their feet 
We're fasting in stocks. Brothers and sisters, friends. These men situation was not just severe. It was chronic. If you have an imagination, I invite you to come with me as we picture this scenario. So Paul and Silas, the dark, dark dungeon, which means uh, that they would have lost a sense of time. They did not know when it was day or when it was night because all around them was darkness. Not only that, the confinement resulting from the fact that their, their, their feet were in stocks so they could not move about. The pain as a result of the lashes they had previously received. The hunger as they were not fed. The thirst as they were not given anything to drink. The separation from their families who did not know where they were at that particular time. So they were cut off with no cell phone to call or to send a text message. These men situation was severe. Can I say to the Seventh-day Adventist tonight, that the way of Paul and Silas is going to be the way for some of our Seventh-day Adventists. Are we together? Just as our Paul and Silas were hated, some of us will be hated. Some of us will be persecuted. So, 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 so Paul and Silas, their situation was dire. But the Bible tells me that despite the fact that their situation was rough, the Bible says in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, that at midnight, are we still out there? At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Can I tell you that I learned that midnight is the darkest part of the 24 hours. But I also learned that it comes before dawn. Midnight also have a spiritual application. I want to talk to somebody in Hilwan at this time. That midnight represent that time in your life when everywhere you turn it is just darkness and you're wondering what in the world is happening. Midnight. Midnight represent that time when, when Hilwan Mr. Sir, Miss Ma'am, nothing just now go on. You try everything and everything fail. Midnight. You have given everything in that relationship. And somehow it just now work. Heartbreak after heartbreak. Midnight. It could be that like Paul and Silas, you are at that breaking point and you do not know what to do. 
a good thing to do when you do not know what to do is to pray there is power in prayer prayer shall run do, do, does not bring you up to God but bring God's down to your level the Bible says at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God so in their difficult situation the men at church and as they prayed and as they sang the Bible says that the other prisoners in the other jail cells heard them not only did those other prisoners hurt were flung open. Can I tell you that the hands that burst the chains and opened the doors represent the same hand, the same bloodless hand, the same torso-less hand in Daniel chapter 5 that wrote on the wall at Belshazzar party, Mine, Mine, to kill you far son. Which means that the days of Babylon was numbered. Belshazzar was weighed in the balance. And found wanting. The ants that opened the prison cell. For Paul and Silas. Represent the same hands. In Matthew 27 verses 50 through to 53. When Jesus died and the veil was ripped from top to bottom, the hands that opened the prison cells represent the same hand that wrote in the sand when the woman was caught in adultery. The hands that open the prison cells represent the same hands that formed and fashioned man in the image of God. And then God breathed into man the breath of life. The hands that open the prison cells represent the same hands that stretched out on Calvary's cross. And was nailed so that I can have life and have life more abundantly. And so as Paul and Silas prayed in their tough time, heaven responded. The guard on duty entrusted to keep them safely. Seeing what had happened. He believed that the prisoners had escaped. And so he drew out a sword to kill himself. But then from the dark, dark dungeon, bless the Lord somebody, came forth voices which says, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. The man could not believe what he had heard. 
The place was dark. The Bible says he called for a light. And when he saw that Paul and Silas were really there, the Bible says that he went in trembling, brought them out, fell down before them, and addressed them as sirs. Now, now, now that is significant. I wish I had time because I could do a 45 minutes sermon right there. The man addressed the prisoners as sirs. Now, now prisoners are called all kind of names. And sir is not one of those names. Prisoners are called old jail bud. Old bandit. Old criminal. Old thief. Old murderer. All rapist. But these prisoners, Paul and Silas, allowed divinity to take hold of humanity. And as a result, they were addressed as sirs. Hear me. Personally, I have known of former prostitutes who are today called madame. And former murderers who are today called sirs. But that can only happen as you allow divinity to take hold of humanity. The man brought them out and he said, sirs. And he asked them the best question for sure in 2024. Acts chapter 16. And verse 30, the question is, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? This is a question that every person in Shilwan must have. Not tomorrow, but tonight. What must I do to be saved? It was a on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved and thy house. Believe that he suffered. Believe that he died. Believe that he suffered he methadrosis. Believe that he wore a crown of thorn for you. He that believe. Paul says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Verse 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. Just like what I am doing in Hilron tonight. I am pointing you, Hilron, to the word of God. He that believeth, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says that Paul studied with him. Verse 33, the Bible says, not just that jailer, but his entire family gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Children, that's the mission that we are on. We are here on a rescue mission. Every night I told you that we are not here on our own accord. The truth is, Tonight, Wednesday night, people have come from work and all of that. We have a whole lot of other things that we could be doing. 
But because we are on assignment, wherever the Lord leads, then we have to go. That is why we are Cheryl Run. Paul says, believe. The man believed and was baptized. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Children, why are we here? Why are we here making up noise? This is why. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. The Bible says to the church at Sydney, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Children is a part of all nations. And then the Bible says baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe how many things? All things whatsoever I have. And lo, I am with you always. And I said, praise God. Children, we are here on God's business. We are here on the king's business. And we are calling you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Sunday night, I shared with you the best text in the Bible. Tonight, I want to share with you one of, probably in the top three, most powerful text in the Bible. And I am speaking based on experience. My many years of evangelism, I would have watched this text. I can share experience after experience using this one text. Mark 16. What book did I say? Mark chapter 16 and verse 16. The Bible says, the Bible says, Hilwan, the Bible says, he that that believeth not will die without hope and go to hell. That text right there. In the year 2000, when they launched Pentecost and more, a lot of crusades were going on. I would have done several during that period of time, 2000, 2001, 2002. In 2000, I did a crusade in Yalas. And in terms of how I measured success at that time, it was a very successful crusade. We baptized a whole lot of people. That was how I measured success. I was a part of the numbers game. Not anymore. Are we together? We are not into tricking them and baptizing them. The Bible says, they must be taught. Are we together? Now in the event where someone requests baptism. Even if it's a child. Baptize them. So that crusade in Yalasman. Big baptism. I was crusade hopping. So after that crusade. I rested one week. And I moved to another crusade. When I got to this crusade, the very Sunday night, I realized that there was no field preparation. The field was not worked. That 
night when I started to preach was the night when the groundwork started. And so the program was poorly attended. The members them never did a come out and the community worse. But night after night, I would preach to 10 as if I was preaching to 10,000. And when it was 20, I would preach as if I was preaching to 20,000. Five weeks of crusade. Up to the fourth week, there was no one for baptism. In my mind, this is a failed program. Because I measured success based on numbers. At the beginning of the fifth week, a family of four requested baptism. Man, I celebrated. I said, thank you, Jesus. At least my pot no catch trash. The baptism was planned for the last night of the campaign. When I got to the crusade that night, I noticed that the street was jam-packed. And I'm saying, God, what is happening here? Is it because it is the last night everybody come out to hear the preacher for the final time? When I walked onto the church compound, there were people um, on the grounds. And I, was, I felt good because I said at least the, the, the community um, came out to, tonight. When I entered the church, it was a church crusade. They told me that I need to go to the vestry. When I went to the vestry, the family of four, they were inside the vestry meeting with the church board. <clears throat> but the mother, it was a, um, a mother, her daughter, the eldest daughter was... Don't quote me, I, I, I mix up her age. It was between 15 and 16. A little boy who was 13, but I cannot forget the little 10-year-old girl. So four of them, 15, 13, 10, and the mother. When I went into the vestry, <coughs> the mother was saying, we have changed our mind. What? We have changed our mind. Why? She said, my husband is a very, very serious man. She said my husband would have chopped up how many people in the past. And that is why the place was jam-packed. Because her husband said, if the pastor baptized them, she's going to chop up the pastor. And so she said, we have changed our mind. But I was puzzled because I am saying, if they changed their mind, all them did have to do is just not come. We would have seen it all the time. In crusades, people request baptism and you look and you look and them just not turn up. So they could have stayed away. But she came to tell us that she changed her mind. By the time she was talking, somebody touched me and said, somebody is outside to you. And the spirit told me that it was that madman. And so I left the vestry. And uh, can I be honest with you? I was on the king's business, but something came over me, man. I was still human, all right? Yes, man. And so I, I approached and I saw the gentleman standing at the door with his machete in his hand. Outside, jump out. And, and, and I stopped at a distance about you to me. Yeah. And he said, are you the pastor? No. That was one of the fastest. No. And I was not lying. I was the preacher. I was not the pastor. I said, no. And he said, do not baptize my family. Do not baptize my family. And as he, he, he was talking, I retreated, always keeping my eyes on him. I went back to the vestry. When I went to the vestry, the mother was crying. We have changed her mind. The poor woman was struggling. 
She wanted to give her life to the Lord. But because of her husband, the little girl, the, 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 the 15 year old, she was crying, daddy is serious. The little boy was crying, daddy is serious. But the little 10 year old, can't forget her. The little 10 year old was also crying. But her cry was a different cry. Her cry was, the Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not is going to die. And I do not want to die. I do not want to die. She was crying and she was quoting that text. So while they were saying, we have changed our mind. The little 10 year old was saying, I want to be baptized. You know what? She was a tantrum throwing kid. And listen. That little girl threw some tantrum that night. And so what her mother did, her mother decided to just let her be baptized. And so it was time for me to go on the platform. I mounted the platform. And I can tell you, beloved friends, when I tell people how shy I am, they normally laugh at me. But I am bold. When I am standing in the king's business. And so when I mounted the platform. I addressed the gentleman. I said sir. With all due respect. The Lord sent me to this community on his business. I preached the word. I did not force your family into baptism. The spirit of the Lord led them. And I preached. At the end of preaching. That little girl. Mark 16, verse 16, was still crying. Quoting the text. He that believeth and is baptized, that shall be saved. But he that believeth not is going to die, and I do not want to die. Every time I share it, I can picture her literally. She was in a little white dress. Pastor Osborne marched her, was waiting on her in the pool. They led her in the pool. Ten years old. Can you imagine? I preached for five long weeks. And one little girl, ten year old. Failed program. In my mind, the program failed. One ten year old. And as she stood in the water, outside, jumping. Pastor raised his hand and he said upon the profession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet Holy Spirit and he immersed her and he raised her up. She was buried with Christ in baptism and he raised her up and he wiped her little face. And they led her out of the pool. It was time now for the preacher to go home. The man warned that we should not baptize this family. And so when it was time to go, I was accompanied by my wife's aunt. We used to go everywhere to do evangelism. And there was another sister. Sister Sill was with us. And I say to Sister Campbell, you and Sister Sill go to the car. And so they went to the car. And as I came to the door, just on preaching, beloved. And I should be brave. Just don't preach. And so I stood at the door and something came over me, man. Because when I look outside, I saw the man standing with his machete in his hand. And to get to my car, I could not avoid but passing him. And so I stood at the door and I stood there. And as I mop out the place, I realized that the church wall to my left, you know, I was saying, no, as I, as I go to the car, if he move at me, I'm going to move to the fence. I'm going to boom the fence and make my, I was working it out in my mind, you know, because fear got a hold of me, man. 
And so as I stood there, as I stood there and I was watching the gentleman, I was not moving and I felt literally like the spirit of the Lord nudged me in the back. And I stepped down and, and I was walking slowly, gingerly, always having my eyes on him because my plan is to take that fence. And as I got in line with him, the spirit of the Lord showed me that angels descended and held him in check. And so I walked past him, went into my car, breathed the biggest sigh of relief. When I got to the car, sisters Campbell and Syl, they were still praying, cover him, Jesus. I put the key in the ignition, drove home. It was the last night of the crusade, a failed program. Evangelist McFarlane preached for five weeks. One little 10 year old girl got baptized. That was how I measured success. About a year and a half after, I was invited to preach at Deacon and Deaconess's Day at that same church. I wonder if he'll want to listen tonight. I was invited to Deacon and Deaconess's Day at that same church. My first visit after that crusade. When I got there and it was time to preach, the person who introduced me was the head deaconess who had invited me. And in her introduction, she said, Evangelist, I know you don't remember, but I am the little girl's mother. She said, that little girl, I don't remember her name. She said, she gave us no rest. Day and night. Mark 16 and verse 16, the evangelist says, he that believeth, mommy, and is baptized shall be saved. introduction got sweeter when she asked the head deacon to stand the head deacon was the madman are we together beloved friends are we together be 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 beloved as I was introduced he was in tears the little boy the only person from the family who was not a member of the church was the older daughter she was into body ride on all of them things. And so they were asking me at that time to pray for her. And this is what happened when we stand in the way of our children. When we want them to give their lives. Sometimes their head is not there. So, 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 so one little girl led her, her mother and her mashed wielding father and her little brother. And that gentleman served the Lloyd's, the Seventh-day Adventist church as the first elder for years. I am saying there is power in the world. Listen, I could share stories after stories. Let me do a quick one. I know it is late. One more quick one. So I was in a community that is called Cambridge Hill doing crusade and I quoted that text. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not is going to die and go to hell. And while I was preaching a man staggered underneath the tent. It was a big tent and he staggered underneath the tent and he came all the way up to the podium. And everything that I said, he was repeating it. It was disruptive. I'm not going to tell you how I felt, what I wanted to do to him. You know, because I believe that Satan sent him. Everything, he was like disrupting. And so, 
at the end of the meeting, we went home the following night. He was back. He was back and this time he stood up, up before the podium. He was not saying anything. It was a little better. But he was as drunk as a bat. We came down to baptism and he requested baptism. Why, sir? He said, look here. He, 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 he talked with a stammer and beat his leg. We call him Chiefy. He said, I, I, I was in the bar and I heard did you, you said he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that are good dead and, and, and so he requested baptism and the Sunday evening myself the pastor and the first elder elder Sinclair if he's watching we went to his yard and when we went to his yard and we knocked on his gate and when he came out he staggered to us drunk as a bat and so as we talked, we said, man, you're not ready yet, man. And he said, I am ready. I am ready. And he was quoting that he that believed, I am ready. He was, I'm ready. And the pastor said, look here, he's not ready. And the first elder said, he's not ready. And I thought he was not ready. When we went to the site, the crusade site, he came with his bag for baptism still drunk and the pastor said look here we can't baptize him the elder said we can't baptize him and he broke down and he was quoting the text he said he was in the bar when he heard the text and the spirit of the lord says baptize him and i said pastor pastor baptize him i said pastor this one is on me it is on me. Baptize him. I will take all the lick. Tell them when you do it, say I'm me, say you have to do it. Baptize him. And so he, they marched him into the pool. Drunk as a bat. Pastor raised his hand. He immersed him. And he brought him up. And he staggered home, still drunk. Long story short. To date, we have not had a more faithful a deacon. You don't hear what I am saying, beloved friends. You are not hearing me tonight. That gentleman served Bull Bay faithfully for years until he died. You see, beloved friends, sometimes all of us want to make decisions for people. The struggles that the man had, he needed Jesus to help him. It was no one to him who was able to keep him from stop drinking. So the question tonight, what must I do to be saved? Children, what will you do to be saved? The answer is clear. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. It is prayer time. Come on, Johnny. Come and sing for us. It is prayer time. For the final time in this campaign, I want to pray for somebody. This text, Mark 16 and verse 16 says, He that believeth, he'll run. And as baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be damned. Shall be damned. Shall be damned. He'll run repent. He'll run repent. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. We are going to pray. And we are calling everybody. 
in the hearing of my voice for prayer. Gentlemen, we are going to beg you. We now disrupt the thing. We understand so probably somebody under four love, four five love. But we are calling for prayer. We want to pray for one and then we can go back to the domino. Sing a journey. We are calling everybody for prayer tonight. If the shape of your life is tossing on the sea of strife, you need someone. And if you feel so all alone, and your house is not a home, you need someone. If it seems life isn't fair And there's no one left to share All those lonely days and nights And things won't turn out right And you need someone to care And someone just to be I invite there. you to stand as we give you Jesus You need someone I invite you to stand wherever you are I give you Jesus He's the peace that passes all Calling you to pray with you tonight Calling you to pray with you tonight Come I Not yet given your heart you Jesus. Jesus believeth The Bible says he's the perfect And is baptized that shall be saved But he that believeth not Shall be damned I give you Calling Jesus. you to pray for you Come gentlemen Come, gentlemen, I see that you pause the domino. Come for prayer. Come. Calling you to pray. Calling you to pray. I give you Jesus. Come. My friend, I give you Jesus. Who is going to walk? Who is going to come? Who is going to come? Calling you to pray. Calling you to pray. Is there one? Keep your spirit Is there the one ground. calling you? You need Come. someone. Come. Come. And if your body is Come. in pain and Come. your health you can't regain, Come. you need someone. And if at times when you have tried, with all the strength you had inside and it seems that you have failed remember on the cross he nailed all the bitterness and grief to give you peace and sweet relief he is that someone that you need i give you jesus calling you to pray he's the peace that passes all is there understanding one? is there one come i come. give you jesus is there one he's the perfect love that casts see you coming my friend i see you coming fear. i see you coming my friend god bless you God bless you. God bless you. I give bless you, you Jesus. Is there one more? He's the water that is there you one drink more? and never I see you coming, gentlemen. Again. I see you coming. Is there one more? Come. Come for this special prayer. I give you Jesus. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. My Shake the preachers out. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Give you is there Jesus. one more? Is there one more? Calling you to pray with you. I give you Jesus. Is there one? He's everything. Is there one more? You'll ever need. We give you Jesus and one. I give you Jesus, my friend. I I hope that this never happened in Hill Run.
Father, I hope that this never happened in Hillrun. A good friend of mine who attend the Region Street Church, they were engaged in some wayside meetings just like this one. And he shared that one night as he preached, as I would have preached my heart out, he came to the end of the sermon as I am at the end and he made an appeal. And there was a gentleman, he said, noticeably, the gentleman joined the congregation to the back and he pleaded, is there one more? Is there one more? All those who were visiting, they walked, but that young man would not walk. My friend said he was convinced that the young man was to come to the altar. Is there one more? He appealed. He got to the point where he ended the appeal bowed his head for prayer he said that as he was bowing his head for prayer the young man walked away instead of walking to the altar he walked away God bless you my brother God bless you shake the preacher's hand he said the young man walked away and as he started the prayer not very far in the prayer the prayer was disrupted by five very, very loud explosions. Bam! Bam! Bam, bam, bam! That young man, just around the corner from where the meeting was being held, got five headshots and died on the spot. Heard his last message and knew it not. Rejected his final God send us out here on this spot. We are not here on our own accord. I have been saying that. God send us here. God etched out this spot and he said this is the spot. God send us here. This voice has been echoing in your homes, in your ears, in your heart. Make a decision. Make a decision. Tonight we give you Jesus. The big question tonight is what must I do to be saved? The answer is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved and thy house. Is there one more? Is there one more? Where are the girls? Where are the women? From the other night it is just the men. Where are the women? Calling you to pray. We're about to pray. Is there one? Elder, please come and pray for me again tonight. Or if we have someone assigned, just that person can just come forward. Come and pray for my brothers. Come and pray for my brothers. God bless you, Elder. As elder come to pray, is there one more? 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 God bless you, young ladies. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, young ladies. God bless you, young ladies. God bless you. Is there one more? Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Their hearts to in heaven wide. Before we pray, I always love to do it this way. We are claiming them, so we're inviting you to come a little closer to the brothers. Come and mix. Come and mingle with the brothers. Yes, man. Let us let us bundle up together. Let us pray. Most righteous, eternal God, Abba, our Father, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. we acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of our lives. The one in whom we live and move, the one without whom we would not be existing. 
We want to thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercies towards us. For your goodness, keep running after us. Even when we at times want to evade your goodness, Lord, you have arrested us and arrested our attention with your goodness and your love and your grace. And so, Lord, you have marked this spot. You have sent us here to proclaim Jesus Christ. You have sent us here to tell Hilron that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You have informed us, Lord, to tell Hilron that your coming is even at the door. And, Father, we have answered the mandate to your man servant, Raymond McFarlane. And so the message has come forth to remind us that we are not given our guarantee tomorrow. It is now is the acceptable time. It is now is the time of decision. And so, Lord, we are grateful for those who have walked up to the altar. We are thankful, Lord, because we know, Lord, that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so we are glad and we are rejoicing for these young men and these young ladies who have made this giant step for Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we want you to cover them. Father, we want you to cover them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, we want your Holy Spirit to continue to speak to their hearts. And let them know, Lord, that your coming is even at the door. And tonight is a night of decision. We are never promised tomorrow. And so, Lord, we place them in your hands. We ask, Lord, that you'll be a shelter to them in their times of storm. We pray, oh God, that you'll cover them, Lord. Walk with them, Lord. And, Father, I pray that they will walk with you, even as Enoch walked with you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that tonight that they would have made their calling an election sure. Uh, Father, we move from here, but Lord, your words will continue to resonate with those who have heard it. And we pray, O oh God, that even as the seed is watered, that you will bring the increase. And so, Lord, we ask that there are those who have not walked to the altar but they have heard the word, the clear word. We pray, Lord, that it will impress upon their hearts. And even if tonight they have not walked to the altar, Father, we ask that you will trouble them. And that, Lord, they will call out and cry out to you, who is the altar and finisher of their faith. Father, continue to keep us. Continue to watch over us. And continue to lead us. And continue to help us, Lord, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And thank you, Lord, for what you will do for these men and these young ladies. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. me thank everyone for the support thank first God for allowing to be here thank of course the community of Ilran for accommodating us and let me thank evangelist McFarlane and family for the helping with the presentation of the word of God amen 
Let me thank those who sing. Of course, those who participate. I'm not going to call any name, but let me just thank you all. And I have to thank, of course, um, those who support the communication platform so we can be online to tell the world that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. My brothers and sisters, for those who are here night after night, and while we're here in Sabbath, let me thank you for your support. God bless you. Keep strong. And as we continue to preach this gospel, we pray that God will give us the strength and the fortitude. Good night. So, 